Well, dang. This is a solid black, black t-shirt. And I'm looking in the camera and it's purple. I'm doing black in honor of the Black Dagger Brotherhood, but anyway. Um, ah, welcome to the D. Louise book series. Christina K-R-S-T-I-N-A. This is where we read books, talk about books. No special effects going on here. Uh, I could use better lighting. I could use better audio. I could use better everything. But it ain't going to happen anytime soon. And this computer is being held together by a binder clip. Being held together by one of these. Seriously, the whole bottom came out. This is doing a good job, too. Oh, and I'm in mourning. I'll talk about that. I lost. It's harder to harder to get a magazine than it is a book. Can you believe you can get any book you want? You can go back for decades, get a book. Can't get a magazine. I lost one over the weekend. I'll give a spiel on that later. But anyways, um, we started off with Darius. Uh, we moved on to Wrath and Dark Lover. And Lover Eternal. And then we moved on to A Lover Awakened. And we did Lover Revealed. Now we are doing Vicious Story in Lover Unbound. And before I forget, spoilers! Spoilers, 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 tons and tons and tons of spoils. I got uh, ripped a couple weeks ago. I was talking about a book from 40 years ago, and I said I will not read books where the hero commits premeditated murder and gets away with it. And people went off on me that I was spoiling the book. It's 40 years old. But they went off of me. So I'm warning you now. Spoilers. I am going to share so much of this book. I'm going to share a ton of this book. Usually my motto is when it's a mystery, a murder mystery book, and we do it with Victoria Thompson, and we did it with J.D. Robb, and uh, we're doing Alex Cross right now, James Patterson's Alex Cross series. We did James Patterson's Women's Murder Club series. Please go check out all those videos. I've done over... Almost a thousand videos now. Um, and I don't spoil the who done it, but I will spoil the characters of the yin yang. I will tell you everything about the characters. And with these books, we get character progression. The story continues from book to book to book to book to book. You have to read them all. And I would start with Darius. It's a brand new book, but I would start with that one. Because you know what's going to happen. If, if you've read the series before, you know what's going to happen. If you don't, I haven't read the series before. Start with Darius. Give yourself a fast perfecter. Although he breaks it, he tells you what's up in the first uh, paragraph. But um, but these books are different. These are all character driven. It's romance. Um, yeah, we'll have to. We'll do this with Cheryl and Kenyon too. But uh, I mean, her heroes have very very tragic tragic lives. Not as bad as Asheron though. We will we will tackle Asheron one day, and you want to cry? Go read Asheron. So we're gonna start with where is my glasses? Me unprepared. So we start the book with Jane and her sister Hannah, and she's a little kid, and she's whatever reason, and it's not really her father is horrible. Her father is absolutely horrible, horrible person, and um, she's she's on her she's her mother picked her up from school, and they're on her way home from school, and it's her birthday, and they're supposed to be having a big birthday party for her, her two friends, her sister. They're gonna have a party, and instead, her mother says this to her. Your father is coming home this evening. What? Jane pushed her glasses up on her nose. When? Tonight. So I'm afraid the... No, you promised. Her mother looked over. I beg your pardon. 
and her Jane's like, you promised I would have a party, and her mother's like, no, not only we get the party, but we're gonna throw your gifts away, and we're gonna throw your cake away. And she gets no dinner. She has to stay in her room. And then her father's going to be upset that the table balance is, is incorrect because there's not four of them. The table's only three of the table. But he, she's being punished, so he's not going to override his wife. His imbalance. I don't like her father at all. Absolutely do not like him at all. Jesus. She's always going off and doing all my videos. No matter what time of day I do a video, she's always going off. Dang. Bing, bing, bing. <clears throat> I didn't count today. I usually count. So she ends up going to her room. If she sent to her room later on that evening, her sister comes. Her sister made her a card for her birthday, and Jane is overwhelmed that her sister took the time to make her a card. That's a very precious thing to Jane. And it is. If it's, if you have if you're young and you're you know you don't have money whatever you can make something for a sibling that you took the time and the effort to make for it. It should be an appreciated gift. And while her and her sister uh, have a little time together, they bring out the Ouija board, and uh, uh, she says, "What Jane asks, what is the name of the boy I'm going to marry?" She didn't expect the thing to move, and it didn't. A couple more tries, and she leaned back in frustration. After a moment, she rapped on the wall behind her head. Her sister knocked back, and a little later, Hannah sneaked through the door. When she saw the game, she got excited and jumped on the bed, bouncing the pointer in the air. How do you play? And they have to be quiet, because they don't want the parents to know that she's in. Um, what can we ask? Who we're going to marry? Okay, now Jane was nervous, but what if the answer wasn't Victor? Let's start. That's the Casey Lexington goal. Uh, put your fingers on the pointer. Don't push down or anything. Just like that. Um, who was Hannah going to marry? The pointer didn't move, even after Jane repeated the question. It's broken, Hannah said. Let me try a question. Who am I going to marry? A squeaky little noise rose up on the board as the pointer began to move, and it spells out vicious. Um, dreaded the inside of Jane's rib. I told you it was broken. Who's called vicious? Jane looked away from the board, then let herself back on the pillows. This was the worst birthday she'd ever had. Um, so then she asked, what will I get for Christmas? And Jane says, ask it a yellow no, yes or no question. And Hannah says, will I get anything for Christmas? And the pointer says, no. And, uh, Jane asks, and she's like, no, too. But uh, her sister dies that night. Um, so her little sister dies. She had a disease. She was ill. She was sick. She dies. Then we have talked about this in the past. Um, I enjoy thoroughly, and it's talked about. It It never actually happens, and the characters are fine with it never hap ever happening. Sometimes um, you might want to wish for just a tad bit, but we're, we're okay with it. Uh, some people might be okay with it not happening. Some people might have wished that we'd gotten a, a small something, but it, it's okay that it didn't happen. I wish the same thing with Kim Harrison's Hollows. In this book, it's two males. In Kim, ha Kim Harrison's novels, it's two females. Um, both situations, you, you always wonder, you always wonder, they never jump, they, they sit on that ledge a while, but they never actually jump off of it, but it's talked about, and this is one of the first books that it's approached head on, um, by the two characters, and I like the, I always like the interaction uh, between Butch and V. Um, v bought him some uh, leathers on his thighs. Um, um, they don't fit you, V asked. No, the point, no offense, but these are wicked village people. Butch held his heavy arms out and turned in a circle, his bare chest catching the light. I mean, come on. They're for fighting, not fashion. 
So are the kilts, but you don't see me rocking the tartan. And thank God for that. You're too bow-legged to pull that shit off. Butch assumed a bored expression. You can bite me. V, v things I wish. And I just, I just love their little back and forth. Marissa comes in. Now, you know, in the last book, Butch married Marissa. Um, uh, v uh, talks about, talks with Fury about a dream he had. Uh, John Matthew goes through uh, his situation. We will get to that in a minute. Um, uh, Describe Virgin comes to V. And if you're new to the series, you didn't see this coming. And you want to hate the woman because the same reason for V, Vicious hates the woman because she watched it all happen and did nothing to prevent it because she gave her oath. Now, if an evil person gives their oath, it's like, Phew, who cares? But when a good person gives their oath, they stick to it. And she suffered. But she did not suffer as much as V suffered. V suffered tremendously. She watched it. And I hate that she watched it. And you don't, you don't have sympathy for this woman because she allowed it to happen. She did nothing to protect her son. She let it happen because she gave her word and that was horrible. Absolutely horrible of her to do that. Um, so, uh, it is, uh, it is only I, warrior, Jesus Christ, the scribe virgin stood before him, swept in black robes from head to foot. Her face covered her tiny form dominating the penthouse. From beneath her, a glow spilled out onto the marble floor, bright as the noonday sun. Oh, this was an audience he wanted right now. Yup. He bowed and stayed put, tried to figure out how he could keep drinking in this position. I'm honored. How you lie, she said. Lift thyself, warrior. I could see your face. V did his best to marshal some hi, how are you, onto his puss in hopes of canoeing the oh fuck me that was there. God damn it, Wrath had threatened to turn him into the scribe virgin. If he couldn't pull it together, guess that dime had dropped. Um, yes, it would, she said, but do what you must. He swallowed the vodka like it was water and put the glass on the wet bar. The purpose of my visit was not to do with your king. The scribe virgin floated over, stopping when she was just a foot away. V fought the urge to step back, especially as she reached out her glowing hand and brushed his cheek. Her power was like that of lightning bolt, deadly and precise. You didn't want to be her target. It is time. Time for what? But he kept a lid on himself. You didn't ask questions of the scribe virgin. Not unless you want to add being as floor wax to your resume. Your birthday drew is near. True, he was going to be 303 years old soon. He couldn't think why that would warrant a private visit from her. If she wanted to fly him some birthday jollies, quick something in the mail would be just fine. Fuck it would rock out an e-card from Hallmark and call it a day. I have a gift for you. I'm honored and confused. Your female is ready. Vicious jerked all over like someone had goosed him in the ass with a jackknife. I'm sorry, what? I have no female. You do. She dropped her glowing arm. I have picked her from among all the chosen to be your first mate. She is the most pure of blood, the finest beauty. As V opened his mouth, the sky virgin stream rolled over him. You will be mated and the two of you will breed. You will also breed with the others. Your daughters shall replenish the ranks of the chosen. Your sons shall become members of the brotherhood. This is the destiny to become the prime male of the chosen. The prime male dropped like an H-bomb. Forgive me, Sky Virgin. Uh, I need, need no offense, but I will take no female as my own. Yes, you will. And you will lay with her in the proper ritual, and you will bear. she will bear your young, as will the others. Visions of getting trapped on the other side, surrounded by females, unable to fight, unable to see his brothers or Butch, 
snapped the hinge on his mouth. My destiny is as a fighter with my brothers. I am where I should be. How fatherless, how fearless of you to deny your station. You are so like your father. Wrong. He and the blood letters had nothing in common. Your holiness. You shall do this and you shall submit of your own volition. I need a goddamn reason. You are my son. He's like, huh? Um, 303 years ago, you were born of my body. The sky virgin rose off her face, face of its own violation, revealing a ghostly ethereal beauty. Lift thy so cursed palm and know our truth. So she made a deal with the devil to bear, to have children. And the devil agreed. So she had his child. And she agreed that after so many years, she would give up the child to him. And he destroyed the child. He beat it. He castrated it. Um, he did everything he could to that boy. And then we have the other side. The Chosens are just talking about each other. Um, John and Quinn and Blay are getting to know each other. They're becoming really good friends. Um... I'm going to leave that part, except for one other part, up. Um, but uh, <clears throat> V tells the gang what's up. They're like, huh? You're going to do what? Of all of them, he's one of the ones that prefers very violent BD, BD, BSDM or BDSM. I forget how it goes. But he is one of the ones that prefers a lot of violence. Uh, a lot of pain and he's going up to these um virgins these innocent girls that have lived in a closet and his mother expects that him mr violent to go to a girl that's been in her closet a whole life i don't think so but i mean these girls are going to be absolutely terrified of this big huge guy and who likes pain and violence and torture and she, you know, it's not going to work. Then uh, V decides that he's going to go out fighting. He's going to go out looking for the lessers. And I guess I was remiss and I should have explained all of it, but um, about the Black Dagger Brotherhood, they're fighting they're the police for the vampires. And there's a group of them right now. Um... The one that's missing is Tor. He will be back, but it's going to take a while. He left after his mate died. Wellesley died in a bomb explosion by uh, the uh, the Lessers. The Lessers are the enemy of the Black Dagger Brotherhood. And the Omega is their ruler, and the Sky Virgin is the brother's ruler. And, well, Wrath is king, but she's supposed to be their godlike creature. And um, he goes after the lessers, and he it goes wrong, and he ends up getting shot and taken to the hospital, where he meets Dr. Jane Whitcomb, and his plumbing is a little different than the average person's plumbing. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Jane Whitcomb looked up from the patient chart she was signing and went, Manuel Manello, MD, Chief of Surgery at St. France, was coming down the hall at her like a bull, and she knew why. Oh, this is when, this is wasn't what I was looking for. Um, uh, she's applied to work at another hospital, and he doesn't want her to go. Um, but, uh, so then V comes to the hospital. This is what I was looking for. Um, uh, Jane frowned and leaned in closer to the screen. Interesting bullet round, not the typical oblong shape she was used to seeing inside her patients. Still appeared to be a garden variety lead. Jane approached a table where the patient had been hooked up to the mach anesthesia machine. His chest had been prepared, the regions around it shaped into surgical cloth. The orange wash of Benetine made him look like a bad fake Tim. No bypass. I want to see use up the time. Now tell me we have blood for him. We do, although his blood didn't type. It didn't, he didn't type any type of blood test. His organs are displaced. They're in the wrong place. Um, so some of the medical stuff is, um, 
She gets pictures. He has a six-chambered harp. She wants to do a study on him. She's talking about all this stuff. Her and Manuel talk. He doesn't want her to leave. Um, then uh, Butch, V, and Fury have some time together. They have a couple of chapters. Um, they, they talk about the fact that V went through all this stuff. And his mother never did anything to help him. He was tortured and raped and hit and beaten and all this kind of stuff. And she just watched. And I'm agreeing with these. I'm agreeing. His mother, uh, she needs to be slapped upside the head. Yeah, she agreed, but it doesn't work. Um, uh, they go to rescue. They find out that Vicious is in the hospital. They go to rescue him. They pull him out, and Vicious demands that they take Jane with them, that there's a, his voice, his inner voice is saying she's mine, so they take her with them. Um, John Matthew at Lash is returning to the program. He's gone to the change. <clears throat> we got to deal with that stuff. Um, Jane wakes up. And they've got Jane in the Brotherhood Center in the compound underground. And Vicious is there on the bed. And they have they talk Layla into coming to give him blood. And Jane watches the whole thing. And she discovers they're vampires. And she doesn't believe it. She believes she's dreaming. Um, we deal with the Chosen again. Um, I'm looking for that chapter now. Um... So, you know, and it's been a thing now that um, Butch, Butch does this thing with the uh, the lessers. He inhales them and he, and he destroys them so their souls don't, uh, don't get put in the jar like they've been doing, but they go back and they're permanently destroyed. But then Butch needs healing, so Butch crawls into the bed with V and... Uh, um, she looked really close. Um, uh, they, 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 uh, you know, um, what's that word? Um, spoon. There we go. Spoon. So, uh, they do that and, uh, kind of. Uh, Butch asked how, how, okay, leaned to the side and looked at V. There was a long pause. How you doing? Uh, fine. Back at least there was one good thing. The cop was back to normal. His eyes clear, his stance strong. His scent a combination of Marissa's ocean smell and his bonding. Um, interesting. Usually when V thought about those two together, his chest felt like it was wrapped in barbed wire. Now he was just glad his friend was healthy. You look great, cop. Butch smoothed his silk pinstripe shirt. Gucci can turn anyone into a rock star. You know what I mean. Those familiar hazel eyes grew serious. Yeah, thanks. Um, as the door shut, Jane glanced over her shoulder. How long have you been lovers? His eyes met her and there was no getting out of the question. We're not. You sure about that? Trust me, for no particular reason, he looked at her white coat. Dr. Jane Wickham, trauma. Made sense. She had that kind of confidence. So I, w I was in bad shape when I came in? Yeah, but I saved your ass, didn't I? A wave of awe came over him. She was his Raman, savior. They were bonding. Yeah, right. Right now, his savior was inching away, backing up until she hit the far wall. So she's a little worried about... um him and uh, V discovers that he's in love with her and John Matthew goes to class and uh, V explains to her because Jane's got this feeling she's convinced that she's going to die they're going to murder her they're not going to let her go you know, we've got this captive now. She's seen what we look like. But uh, V explains um, 
the mind washing, the memory washing uh, stuff. He tells her about his childhood. They exchange a few things on their childhood. Um, uh, Blay has some issues. Um, Fury gets in an accident and needs treatment, and Jane treats him. And uh, they talk about Fury. And uh, John and Blade go through some more stuff. Um, John meets Zex at Zero Sum. And I don't know why it's not brought up at some point, but uh, she's not told that John is mute and unable to speak. She asks him questions. He responds in sign language. She doesn't know about sign language. Things get a little rough. He gets a little embarrassed. But then um, Blay and them come in and save the day and give the cards of introduction, saying who uh, John is. And uh, they decide, the Zex is like, oh, she didn't know who he was, blah, blah, blah. Um, Bella is having a little problems, and Z needs Fury to talk to Bella. Bella is a little... Uh, has a, a, a situation you can read about. Um, uh, v and Jane talk, um, tell her about his prearranged marriage. She tells him about Cormie. She tell he. Oh God. Jane talks about her sister Hannah and her childhood and how rotten it was, and um, how her father made her eat on her sister's funeral day. Even though her stomach was a disaster area, her father insisted she eat, and then she bopped all over him in church. So, uh, things aren't going too good there. We also get some more information from the Chosen. Uh, John has an interesting dream, and I just thought I'd, there's only a couple little things I'm going to bring up with him, because you can, his story is continually from book to book to book to book. Um, but, John has this little vision. Um, he met Beth's dark blue eyes, and from out of nowhere, a hazy vision came to him. He was in a club, in a goth club with torment. No, he was watching tour with someone, a big male, a brother-sized male, whose face John could not see. John frowned, wondering why in the world his brain would cough up something like that, and then he heard the stranger speak. She's my daughter, Tor. She's a half-breed, D. And you know how he feels about humans. Torment shook his head. My great-grandmother was one, and you don't see me yakking that up around him. There they were, talking about Beth, weren't they? Which meant that the stranger with the blurred features was John's father, Darius. John strained to get the vision in focus for a single look onto his dad's face. Praying for clarity as Darius lifted his hand to a, catch a waitress's eye before pointing at his glass bottle of beer and Torment's dry glass. Um, I'm not going to let another of my children die, he said. Not if there's a possibility I can save her. And anyway, there's no telling whether she'll even go through the chain. She could end up living a happy life, never knowing about my side. It's happened before. So John is witnessing... The conversation from here. So that's what he sort of witnesses, but he never actually gets a good view of his dad. Um, so John goes through the uh, transition, and there are some issues there which have long, uh, they'll be expressed from book to book to book to book. John's story is going through all of the books. Um, so, uh, Cormia and Layla talk about stuff, and V and John talk, V and Jane talk about childhood. Uh, we have a lot of clay stuff. Um, they talk about the past. Um, at first, um, they decide, um, you know, V's going to give up Jane. And he's all sad about this, and he's a wreck. He really loves Jane. He wants to spend his life with Jane. And then at the last minute, um, 
I'm not sure which page. Um, Fury, it was going to be Butch to stand in um, for the best man. But Fury decides, and I didn't... I wrote it down, but I don't know which page it is. Um, so, oh, I found it. Uh, Fury asks this question. Um, they talk about the Vicious being primal and how he's totally inappropriate for the whole business. And Fury speaks up. Vicious, if it weren't for the prime male stuff, would you be with Jane? V's diamond eyes shifted over and now his slits. What the F does that have to do with anything? You would be with her. Fury looked over at Wrath. And would you let him write? I mean, I know she's human, but you let Mary come in too. V cut him off. There's no making it work, so drop it. But there is. Bush said, no offense, I'm on my last nerve. Backing off would be a really good place plan for you right now. Um, no, hear me out, Fury said. The scribe virgin wants a male from the Brotherhood, right? For the purpose of breeding, right? Why does it have to be you? Who the F else would it be, V growled. Why not me, Fury says. In the silence that followed, a grenade could have gone off under Rath's desk and no one would have noticed. Well, why couldn't I? She just needs DNA, right? So anyone who's a brother could do it. My line is strong. My blood is good. Why couldn't it be me? Thetis breathes. Jesus Christ. There's no reason I couldn't be primal. V's aggression bled out of him, leaving him with an expression like someone nailed him in the back of the head with a frying pan. Why would you do that? You're my brother. If I can fix what's wrong, why wouldn't I? There's no female I want, as his throat got tight. He massaged him. You're the scribe virgin's son, right? So you could suggest the change to her. Anyone else, she'd probably kill, but not you. Shit, you could maybe even just tell her. And you could be assured that I'll be better at it because I'm not in love with anybody else. So they all agree that Fury's going to be doing it. So um, V talks. To the uh, scribe virgin, she renounces him as his son. Uh, he um, gets permission to marry Mary. Fury's gonna take over as prime male, and we will get to his story in the next book, Lover Enshrined. Um, I just I'm going to, um, I had a few more little spots, um, that I wanted to talk about real quickly before we turn this off, but, um, V, yes, yes, come here, come here, come here, you came to me, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, so, um, so Fury goes up to the other side, and uh, V goes back to Jane, gives her her memories back, because she's gone through a few things, and um, Jane ends up in an accident, and it's a fatal accident, and she goes to the other side, and the scribe virgin interferes a little bit, and saves the day, sort of, kinda. I will leave that for you, but it's an important situation, and it's the start of a new thing. Jane um, is not going to be there all together, but she's going to be there, and you will have to. I will let that part of it. I would, I would if I had, if I really wanted to kill it, I would read the last couple of chapters completely out to you, but. Um, we got to get going with Fury's end of the story because the, the, the story continues. These are one long series. That was one of the reasons I liked them so much was that they were so interconnected. They were the character progression from book to book to book. 
they were all meshed together. Uh, John's story starts here, and it goes through all of the books. It just goes through all of them. And he's the middle or commanding fi figure for quite a few of the books. He's one of the main characters, main storylines going through all of them. Even though we've got the love story going on too. Please hit the like and subscribe. Do not forget to check out Star Trek Generation uh, recaps on Friday. Also, if then Fridays, I'm trying to, um, I don't, I don't understand why we can't get Stephanie Lawrence Sinsters going. If we've got jo jo Julia Quinn's Briggertons out there, let's get Stephanie Lawrence uh, out there and Joanna Lindsay's Mallory's out there. The, the Sinsters are over 30 books. That would be an awesome series because your main characters in the first nine Sinster books will be backup characters in future books. The story continues. The character progression is great. The character progression in these are great. Um, also, don't forget Flashback Mondays. That's where I'm doing the morning um, situation. But we're going to be... I love those magazines. The, the books in them are still valid today. It's a good place to find books to read. You, you can't... It's just an awesome magazine. And also, my daily book reviews. We're doing Victoria Thompson right now and Alec, James Patterson's Alex Cross series. I did videos on J.D. Robb, Janet Ivanovich, um, uh, and a whole bunch of other authors last year, Carolyn Sparks, Krista Davis. Please go and check all this out. And please hit the like and subscribe. Thank you.